hope you're feeling good on a beautiful Wednesday night here in the Tennessee Valley. This is Julie Edwards. But if you're looking to the show tonight, you're hurting a little bit, maybe you've been dealing with an achy shoulder, you got a knee that's not cooperating, oh, this is the hour for you because Dr. Nick Circalone from Apple Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation is in the uh, studio with me tonight. How are you there, Nick? I'm doing great. As always, I love doing this. I know you love doing this. I get charged up. I was driving down the road, you know, had the uh, windows down and the sunroof open. I was like, I need a convertible. <laughs> hey, the music you chose to play tonight will get you in that yeah, It will. I'm just, well. like, so excited. I had to do some 80s stuff from John Cafferty. Works for me. So let's talk a little bit. We're going to throw out some vocabulary words that a lot of people have kind of heard. These are buzzwords now that are, are uh, kind of all around. PRP is one. Hydrocolonic acid? How do you pronounce it? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at me already, Nick. <laughs> Hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid. Okay. This is why I'm not in medicine. Uh, you no, are. I'm, I, just, I love it. I just love Hyaluronic it. Hyaluronic acid. <laughs> Knee pain. We all know that one. Yes. Uh, it's, a, it's a real problem around here. We're an athletic community. Folks are out running, they're out hiking, they're enjoying some rock climbing, or maybe they're just, like we say in some of the spots we do, playing with their grandkids, you name it. Uh, your body begins to wear out, but you still want to be active and move on. I, I do. I do personally. I, you know, they say, ask and you shall receive. Yeah. I want to, I want to go at 125 with all my faculties, all my moving parts in my sleep after a night of dancing. And I want like maybe channel three to turn around and go, Dr. Circalone passed away quietly after a night of dropping it like it was hot. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, then if I can have what I want, I want to be there to see that happen. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Feel? Okay. I, I'm ready for I it. I want to live that long, too. Uh, okay, so let's talk, though, seriously about this PRP, because we're going to give people a phone number to call in if they're not sure how it works. 267-1023. That puts you right into the studio and Dr. Circalone's ear. Because you don't come on talking about stuff unless you see it changing people's lives, and that's what you're seeing. Oh, absolutely. We, we, um, after the first break, we're going to have somebody come on that's an actual patient and <laughs> they do exist uh, yeah we're going to tell well, he's going to tell his story because uh, he was he was probably as surprised as we were on how quickly it worked not not the fact that it worked because we know it does work i mean it's been around since the since the 90s okay so it's been around for a long time prp and prp is just basically what it is is plasma rich protein okay and the way we get that is we extract a vial of your blood and we spin your blood down in a centrifuge. There in the office. In the office. And what it does is we have these special tubes that are designed to take the blood and flip it. So if you ever, if you remember ever having blood taken, they'll spin your blood and it, you'll see this little tiny bit of yellow at the top. Yeah. Well, this, we spin that medium so there's a larger column of that yellow, and that's the serum, and that's the plasma-rich protein. So it's your body healing your body. Basically. And what it does is it's good for repairing tendons. It's good for repairing cartilage. It's good for repairing and healing areas. What it does is it actually acts in some instances as a, um, an irritant or an inflammatory and has the body start healing itself. Self, it's you know they used to use and use the term prolotherapy, but it's they don't use that anymore because there's a lot to prolotherapy that PRP isn't. Do you mind if I pause for a sure. second? Because you did send me an email today and said, "Hey, this is kind of what I want to focus on." Because we've talked a bit uh, in recent months about Stevax that you do there at the office, and we'll touch on that again tonight. But in the PRP info that you sent, you mentioned that that's exactly what it does. These platelets come in. And they help with inflammatory concerns. Well, most of us now think about doing anti-inflammatory, but in this case, you want the inflammation that these create. Can you explain that a little? Yeah. You know, a lot of times we'll take anti-inflammatories, and sometimes what will happen is they'll do the exact opposite over time. Now, in the beginning, the anti-inflammatories work to decrease the inflammation, but over time, your body starts, it doesn't do the same thing. It actually causes more damage by taking them too long. So what happens is while we introduce this inflammatory process, the body says, hey, wait a minute, I have something I need to heal. So your body automatically starts focusing on healing that area, hmm. bringing all the nutrients to that, bringing all the um, enzymes, all the proteins, everything that needs to heal to heal that area right away. Okay. Now, now, I will say this. 
when we do things like this, when whether we're doing hyaluronic acids, which is visco supplementation, whether we're using PRP or whether we're using stem cells, the process takes some time. What I found with the PRP is that the several patients that you know we've done it on to because we want to get this, I guess, block of people that we can say, okay, this is what we're seeing for sure. Before I turn around and go, listen, this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. And what we're finding out is that they're seeing almost instantaneous results. Okay, so we've talked about knee pain. You used your darling grandson, Nicholas, to promote the show tonight, saying, hey, if you have knee pain, listen to my grandfather. He calls you what, Papa? Papa. Uh, But it's not just for knee pain. No, it's not. a large contingent of people listening. But what else does it work on? Well, you know, we can use it for just about anything that has joints and tendons and soft tissues. We can use it for the shoulder. We can use it for the elbow. You can use it for the ankle. You can use it for the knee. We can use it for the hip. Plantar fasciitis. Yes, we can use it for plantar fasciitis as well. Anything where we think that this therapy would help heal that. Now, this is, you know, if you come in and go, oh, you know, I sprained my shoulder and (laughs) I want some PRP. No, no, this is a process that comes after we've done other things. You've tried the anti-inflammatories. They didn't work. You've tried the physical therapy, chiropractic, other modalities that didn't work. Now let's – and now the doctors are going, let's have some let, – I think, I think you need surgery. Well, wait a minute. Let, I got one more thing in my bag I want to try. So how much of it do you think, percentage-wise, and maybe you really know offhand, of the patients who come in have this need or this would be beneficial to them because they've had some kind of an injury, it was an acute injury, Versus people who their joint or what have you has just kind of worn out from use over time. I would do it for both. Acute injuries, you got to give it time to heal anyway. Okay. Um, movement is the key to injury. And, and I, I say that. And is it healing and be, the injury? Is I think so. It? Yeah, that, that's a personal. You know, I've been practicing 26 years. And what I found is that if somebody is injured, and they have more pain than problem. That's really important. Somebody that comes in, if you have a bulging disc that's just inflaming that nerve, it's sticking. Exercise and, and, and all of that's not going to help it. We have to do other things. But I had, I had a patient come in today that was actually in a motor vehicle accident. And what happened was they couldn't turn their head. They were, it was painful to stand up. It was painful to sit. All we did today was give movement exercises, light exercises, you know, little stretching exercises, walked out of the office feeling much better, continue to do these exercises. Let's get the blood flowing that's going to be there. Because what happens is if we don't get that movement going on, Mm -hmm. the body turns around and says, hey, we want to fix this. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw all of this junk at it. And if we don't really get it moving and mobile, what will happen is the the tissue that we put in there is going to be sub- standard to what you had before. With the PRP, which we're finding is once we do the PRP, we want you to start exercising. We want you to start doing physical therapy. We want you to get motion back in there because we want to get the good tissue to start to build up in that area. Okay, so he's giving you kind of the the anatomical, biological, medical background for why this stuff works. From the horse's mouth, though, is always the great place to hear the story. So his patient's going to call in here in a second. 267-1023 is the phone number. You, too, can call in as the conversation goes on. You very well may have a question you want to ask Dr. Circalone about ways this PRP could help you or many of the other things they do there at Apple Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation because it is a complete clinic uh, that helps you through any type of healing that you have facing you. We're back in just a minute. So glad you're tuned in. Tonight we want you to stop looking here. <laughs> stop looking, listen. That's right. That's what we want you to That's do. That's exactly what we want done. You know what? It's been a long day for me, Nick. I can't say hyaluronic acid. I can't repeat lyrics of a song. Does PRP, PRP therapy work for your brain? Well, you know, funny you should say that because. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not going to go there. I got to go there. All right. You know, PRP, everybody goes like, what's PRP? And please do not, do not, do not, I repeat, do not call my office for this. But. PRP is used for hair growth. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. 
That's so why, one, why can't they call your office? Because then? I'm not going to do it. That's why. Well, who does do that? Oh, I don't. I, there's there's hair restoration guys and stuff like that. I'm, I might try it for my a little bit of. You don't thinning. need it. You can't see Nick. You can catch him on Three Plus You on Friday and see for yourself. But he's got a full head of hair. Thank you very much. They, but yeah, they do it. It's called vampire hair growth. No joke. Well. That's not our topic tonight. It's not. But We're talking about getting you feeling better with this PRP. You mentioned earlier, by the way, that this has been in use since the 90s. Right? Uh, it's actually, yes, for as it PRP. But, you know, these therapies have been around for a long time. It didn't just start yesterday. You know, it's been around. It's been proven. You know, most of the time when you hear PRP, a lot of um, hype comes from sports. These guys injure themselves and they turn around and go, you know what? You know, they started injecting into the, the PRP back into their ligaments and tendons, and they heal quickly. And that's how we found out a lot about this, that this worked. And now, you know, it's to the general public. And it's, it's really pretty cost-effective when you look at it versus other therapies. The other thing, since you had touched on, and then we'll bring, is it Ron we're mm-hmm. going to talk to? We'll bring him into the conversation here in just a second. But you mentioned how, for some people, the results happen so quickly. Yes. So it's not like you have to do this and then run the risk of living in pain for a, you know, a length of months unnecessarily. If it's going to work, you're going to know rather, rather soon. Yes, but we don't guarantee that because we, you know, usually we're looking at weeks, sometimes months of, you know, when you say we'll see a difference in it. But one of the things that we do that's, that I think helps and accelerates part of that is we'll brace that knee area and decompress the knee while it's getting worked on. But some people we don't brace and they still do well with it. Also, when we were going through the list of things it can help with, rotator cuff, isn't that one of them? Yes, it is. So I, everything and I have heard, yes. it can be brutally painful to have issues with your rotator cuff. You know, the, the rotator cuff surgery is not bad. It's the rehab that's the bad part. It takes so long because, you know, once you go in there and once they – tighten up the, that shoulder and they, they go in there and they fix that rotator. Cuff. You know, they want to get that motion back pretty quickly. So to get that motion back, you're right away, you're going into therapy and it's hurt. It's very painful. Very painful. So very if, painful. This, if this PRP can help either, if not completely cure it, at least it buys people more time. It does. And here's my thing. You can always get surgery. Right. right. You can always get surgery. But once you get surgery now, you know, now we got something that's not really that good that we have to work with okay let's bring ron in is he on the line jeremiah okay hey ron how are you tonight i'm good how are you doing i'm fine thanks for freeing up some time on your wednesday evening to talk to this friend of yours that we've got in the studio tonight (laughs) i I really listen i really appreciate you coming on and now we're gonna make you we're gonna make you famous brother sounds good to me (laughs) okay (laughs) i'm interested because i think a lot of our listeners would be ron and you can tell as much as you wish but Dr. Circalone was telling me before the show started that the truth is you were a little bit of a chiropractic skeptic to begin with. Mm-hmm. It was your wife who brought you into his office and not for what eventually led you to the PRP. Is that right? It's exactly right. Exactly. And now I'm one of his biggest fans. <laughs> and so, I appreciate that. So when you first went in, when you first went in, what was it, a back issue or a, a knee issue or what was it? It, it started out with my back, and uh, he was helping me uh, by adjusting my back and my hips and uh, felt so much better. And then the knee problem come around, I had uh, fell and landed on my right knee, and I tore the meniscus inside and outside, Yikes. a partial tear of the ACL and a baker cyst in the joint along with arthritis. That's a lot of damage. A lot of damage. And uh, I went to him, not with the knee, but when I fell, uh, the way I fell, I ended up having a mild case of whiplash. Hmm. So while I was there to have the whiplash looked at, I was talking to him about my knee, and that's when he brought up the PRP. And as I understand it, surgery was kind of in your future at that point. Is that right? No doubt. No doubt whatsoever. I've been to an orthopedic surgeon and... He, uh, he said, well, you can either do it now, but if not now, you will be back to see me later. And was it so bad, Ron, that you couldn't walk? Did you have to use crutches? Oh, or? I didn't have to use crutches, but uh, it was so painful to walk that it was starting to affect my, my performance at work. And because uh, I do a lot of walking on my job. And if I got close to a chair or somewhere to prop up, that's what I had to do. 
it was excruciating, to say the least. So do you remember, Nick, what it was like when he came in that day? Do you remember looking at, because you did an x-ray, right? Oh, yeah, we, actually, when, when he first came in, we did an x-ray. It wasn't getting any better. Um, it was probably a three-week period of time, maybe a little bit longer, wasn't it, Ron, that before we even uh, yeah. did the injection? Because then we did an MRI, and we found out all this stuff. You, you went to the uh, the orthopedic surgeon. He looked at it. gave you a cortisone shot, correct? Correct. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, and go ahead. I'm sorry. The cortisone had no effect whatsoever. It was just still just as much pain as it was before. Yeah. And then we then we tried to brace on it, and the brace helped a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then we decided that we were going to do the PRP. And, yep. you know, and, and I'm just going to be honest, he was the first one that we did the PRP in the office. Were you a little bit skeptical? Or at this point, did you think, like a lot of people might, well, what do I have to lose? I don't think I was skeptical because, like I say, I've been going to him for a while. And, uh, you know, it's the doc circle is a little different. He he actually cares about his patient, and he's telling me that he thinks this will work. I had 100% trust in him, and, but you know, and also you know, I did think, well, this is a lot better than surgery. Let's give it a try. So, and, uh, you know, he kind of he you're right. He does care about his patient. So I'm sure if he yes. was telling any patient story that had success at the end of it, he would get this smile on his face and not want to quit talking about it because that's his objective. But he was really, really happy and sharing your story with me because your results did happen pretty quickly. Oh, almost immediately. And, to, you know, people that I talked to about the whole procedure, I'm like, you know, I don't know if you'll have the same results that I had or not. But when I left his office the day he done the, the injection, my wife and I got in the car and drove to Johnson City for a family function. And I was kind of thinking that might be too much, but I made the trip fine. Never had to take any ibuprofen or anything. So, and oh, go ahead. Sorry. The, with the brace, you know, I still had to wear the brace for, what, four or five weeks after the injection? Yeah. And now I don't even do that. And it's been how long since you had the injection? Five months. And just one injection? One injection. Wow. And there's no pain. Um, I, I, I wouldn't hesitate to do it again. Well, now, Matter of fact, we're talking about doing it to my other knee. You had a pretty good motivator, too, for helping you know that this was the course of action you wanted to take. Can you tell the listeners what it what was your end game, if you will? <laughs> my daughter was getting married, and I was to walk my granddaughter down the aisle. And my my motivation was was to walk her down the aisle with no limp whatsoever and no knee brace. And the outcome and was? Yes, it was wonderful, no knee brace and no limp. So... When So you mentioned that you had to wear the brace, though, for a little while, four or five weeks, I guess, after the injection. I had talked to Nick, asking him if you had to come in, anybody did, for therapy or anything once the injections are, are administered. He said pretty much what he does is just send people home with some exercises to do at their own convenience. Was that true in your case? That's exactly true. Um, uh, there was no follow-up uh, physical therapy um, no, no visits for, for my knee. Uh, it's, it's been the best thing I could have ever done. What'd your wife There's say? No doubt. Uh, she's ecstatic. No <laughs> surgery, no limping, no complaining. <laughs> and how many times has she said to you, I told you to go see him. I told you to go see him. Mm, maybe once. <laughs> <laughs> now I think he tells her. <laughs> so, yeah, now I tell her. That's right. Okay, so I'm curious about something because Ron mentioned that y'all are thinking about doing it on the other knee, not to pry too much into poor Ron's personal life, but that knee was not also <laughs> injured, was it, in his fall? Uh, no, it wasn't. It, this is from years ago. Uh, I've actually had surgery done on it, and it's it does okay, but there's still a lot of arthritis in there, and at times, it's it's painful. Uh, it's nothing I can't. I'm not. I'm it's nothing I can't bear. But uh, as time goes on, it gets worse. So you know, we're we're kicking the idea around about doing the other one. Sure. Once um, you've tasted success, why not? 
Absolutely. Take it to the limit. You know, and and so. by, by doing the other knee, we're not hurting anything. We're, we're just allowing it to have a better outcome in the, in the future. Because if we can do it and slow down the degenerative process, we're doing really well. So have you shared the story with your friends, Ron, when, when they hear what yeah. happened to you? I certainly have. Uh, I've had people contact me that I don't even know that I've actually give friends my phone number that they know people that's got knee problems. Absolutely. Tell them to call me. Well, um, we're going to we're gonna catch a commercial. Will you mind hanging on the line with us for a few minutes and, and we'll keep our conversation going after this? No, not at all. All right. Hang tight, everybody. Sure. Welcome back, everybody. We've got the Nick Circleone and I still in the studio, and Ron is still on the phone. Are you there, Ron? Are you there, Ron? Maybe. Jeremiah, is he there? Oh, I guess he had to hang up. Well, if he wants to call back in, Ron, if you're still listening, 267 1023 is the phone number, or I think Jeremiah might try to give you a call because I did have a. Another question for Ron, but we were talking in the commercial. We always have fun, Nick, talking in the commercial. And you said to me what you said before, which is you love doing this because you really love educating people on what you know. I do. I I think it's important that people realize what I can do, what chiropractic can do, you know, even with that advanced degree in orthopedics, what we really do. Because people have this kind of, I don't know, this preconceived notion about exactly what I do. And, and I then, think they're going to come in, and they're going to get on the table, and you're going to crack them, and they'll walk out and feel better. I, I, it's, I, I find it, it's, how do I say this? I feel very proud of what I do. I love what I do. And when, it's funny, when a patient goes to their doctor and says, oh, I've been to the chiropractor, they'll, the doctor said, okay, okay, whatever, whatever. And then there are times when they'll come back and they go, I said, did you, he said, oh, I said your name. And they were like, oh, I know who that is. Oh, yeah, he's fine. That's great. You know, take, he'll take care of you. You know, when you say my name, they know who I am. If you just go, oh, I'm a chiropractor, they just have this, all of a sudden, this preconceived notion. But when people hear my name, it, it's, it's a whole different attitude when they, when they hear it. And I think, and I'm very proud of that. We, I worked really hard to get that way. When uh, we were talking earlier about, athletes and how this PRP first became known Mm -hmm. in its use in athletes. We are in the midst now of football season, high school athletes taking the field. Is it something, if they have a bad enough injury, even as a younger person, would PRP be beneficial? Absolutely. Because we're not injecting anything foreign in their body. We're just giving them back something that they have. And in their case, they have so much still to live and look forward to. Go ahead and get the repair done as quickly as possible. Oh, I would, I would... I would personally, if a kid hurt themselves playing football Mm -hmm. and they're still having issues with it and it's not rehabbed right, Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And I would do it. I would do it in a heartbeat. So I think Ron's back with us now, and Troy is also called in. We'll get to his call in just a second. But, Ron, are you there now? Well, poor Jeremiah. He's got calls coming in, and then he's talking to Ron at the same time. Are you there, Ron? All right, Nick, you and I are going to keep. That's all right. <laughs> I don't get tickled on the radio very often, but I'm going to get a little bit tickled tonight. So I'll tell you what, we've got a couple of callers who've called in. Let me go uh, to Rob first, who called in about a back injury on the line. Can we take his call, Jeremiah? Hey, Rob, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Nice to talk to you. I'm sorry for the delay, but what's your question for Dr. Circalone tonight? Well, my question is, uh, um, so on my 30th birthday, I was uh, – I was running some sprints, and uh, I think I ruptured a disc in my lower back. Um, and I've had, I guess, sciatica for about a year now. I mean, it's gotten a little bit better over time, but I mean, even a year later, I can still, I mean, I can still feel it kind of going down my right, the back side of my right lower leg. Mm. And if I were to come in the office, I guess just what would the treatment plan look like, or what, 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 what would you be able to do for that? You know, that's that's a great question. To answer it would be, I'd have to ask a lot of questions. Like, number one, what did you do for it? I mean, have you had x-rays? Have you had an MRI? Have you had, you know, corticosteroids? Have you had anti-inflammatory? You know, that's that's kind of the where we would start. And then find right. out exactly, you know, what the problem is, where it is. We can do anything from, you know, manipulation all the way to decompression therapy to, you know, 
even getting you some injections in the area if it's not been done. So there's a lot of things that we can do. It all depends on what we find, to be honest with you. Okay. So it's it's not, you know, you don't come in there and, uh, you know, oh, yeah, you got to bro uh, let's just crack and snap and out the do No, that's not how it goes. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You know, Have you re- tried things already, though, Rob? Uh, really, just ibuprofen is about it. Yeah, you're, you're, I would be perfectly honest with you that I, the first thing we would do is we would do an x-ray. I want to see what it looks like. And then we would do some kind of conservative treatment on it, whether we do some decompression or some mild manipulation to see if you get better, giving you some home exercises and even doing some exercise in the office and seeing if that helps. If it does, great. If it doesn't, then we would go the next step and do an MRI and, and you know, kind of follow that right down the line until we found out exactly um, what's going on and fix it. You know, sometimes, you know, we can extrapolate from an x-ray what's going on and just with conservative treatment make you feel better. But if we have to go further, we can do that, too. Would you like their phone number, Rob? Yeah, I would, actually. Okay, so it's Apple Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. They're over on Shaliford Road, right near the Hamilton YMCA. Yes. And the phone number is 855 Seven three seven six. Y'all are open tomorrow, Nick? Yeah, I mean, you could call at any time, and then somebody will either you can leave a message or one of the girls will call you right back. But but, but they'll be in the office tomorrow. Yeah, we're in the office tomorrow and Friday. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for taking my call. You're yeah, welcome. And, and when you call, just let them know that you, you know, you, we were talking on the radio, and that'll let them know and, you know, where we can fit you in. And they'll try to get you in pretty quick. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. You're oh, welcome. thank you. Have Hope a great you feel day. Better. All right. Bye. So uh, that was kind of good that he said, "How would you treat it?" Because the truth is, you can't make that answer without looking at somebody, and you do like to do things in a conservative way. You're not going to just go, "Oh, here, let's try this expensive treatment." If something simple can work. Well, I will tell you this: there are clinics out there, and uh, I'm not a fan. I'm just going to tell you, I'm not a fan. That it's twenty five dollars to get cracked. You go in there, I don't know if they do an exam. I don't know what they do. And you go in there and pop, 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 you're out the door. 25 bucks. I'm thinking, wow, I don't know if I want to take that kind of um, Couldn't that do damage? Liability. Yeah, no, yeah, it can. And I'm like, eh, I don't know if I could do that. You know, I need to know what's going on. I want to find out. You know, I became a doctor, not a technician. You know. That's a good point. That's you know, a very good statement. A, a, monkey can, a monkey can adjust. It's a doctor that knows when and where to do it. So there's a, there's a, there's a big difference. So uh, the somebody else had called in, and, and I don't think we could quite get to his call. I guess it was Rob who had the back injury, sciatica. We hear about sciatica right. a lot. Are there different triggers that cause sciatica? Sure, there is. It, it it all depends. It can be anything from a disc to a facet or joint inflammation. It could be a combination of the two. It could be a spur or a um, a little a piece of bone. It could be stenosis, which means there's closing off of that area. There's a lot of things it could be. And so when you do the x-ray or the MRI, if it goes to that point, do you go into it knowing specifically what you're looking for, or do you look at just everything? That's a great question. Do you know why that's a great question? Why? Because as a, as a physician, when you come into my office, I'm taking in an image to confirm what I already know. You are. Yeah. It, rather than g- diagnosing you with an so the image. The image supports your theory. Exactly. Rather than giving you your theory. Exactly. I, I, nine times out of ten, and, and I'll tell you what that, that tenth time is, but nine times out of ten, when I do an x-ray, an MRI, I know what I'm looking for. Now, there, I've been shocked that I found other things, mm-hmm. but I found what I was looking for. A prime example of this, and I've had a patient for years, and he comes in, he had low back pain. I took x-rays of it. I knew he had degenerative disc disease, did really well, comes back in about six, seven months later, full-blown, kind of ridiculous stuff. I go, ooh, I think you blew the disc. Let's get an MRI. Took an MRI. I looked at the MRI. The radiologist looked at the MRI, and neither one of us was concerned with the bulging disc. Hmm. We were concerned with the renal tumor that we found. Oh, whoa. And that's some stuff we'll find. Which is, again, and then we'll go to commercial, but again speaks to the pop, crack, snap, you're out of there clinic versus you because what if you had not ordered that MRI and you missed it, right? It, it, 
it, there was uh, I would have been devastated to find out later on that somebody like we missed something. Right. So you're not trying to assume that you know everything. You want to see something to to back up what you believe. And what we do is we we surround ourselves by other physicians that we know and trust that we can refer you to and go go here. They'll be able to take care of this. And we try to manage our patients. Like if I send you to Dr. so and so and you know I don't want, if mm-hmm. I send you to my my friends that I trust, I want, I'm going to get feedback from it and I want to see you back. So I know that you're not falling through the cracks and we can make sure that you're getting into the right places. Right. Very, very good. Okay. Two, six, seven, one, oh, two, three. We got to catch a commercial. If you want to call in, ask a question, this is your last remaining chance to do that. And Ron's back on the phone with us too. When we come back, glad you're listening, everybody. Oh, you got some toe tapping music there, Nick Circalone. Geronimo. I like that one. All right, so this has been a good hour, an educational hour. Uh, we have had a few issues with the phones, and poor Jeremiah has done his best to get calls coming in. But Ron, we think, is on the hotline. So let's give this thing a try, shall we, Jeremiah? We're going to push the magic button. Ron, are you there? Yes, I'm oh, here. Yay! yay! You'd think we were calling up to Mars or something. <laughs> Jeremiah has given it his all. Nick Circalone's here to attest to that truth. So thank <laughs> yes. you, Jeremiah. And thanks, Ron, for hanging tight. Oh, you're welcome. So I did want to ask you, we had talked earlier when you talked to your friends, are, are when you had the injection and then I don't know how many of your friends had kind of seen you hobbling around, I guess at work they had. You mentioned you yeah. have to walk quite a bit. When you came in then just a few days later walking pretty straight, were people surprised? Yes, they were. They really were. And uh, when uh, the wedding, when I was walking my granddaughter down the aisle, a lot of the people that were at the wedding, that was May the 19th. I think the the injection was at the end of April, maybe. No, it was in May so, we did it. Like okay. the very beginning of May. So, yeah, it was close. Wow. Yeah, May the 19th, I was walking down the aisle with, with no brace, no limp, and a lot of people that, you know, the people that had seen me earlier, they were, then they see me not limping, they're like, well, what'd you do? So, and then the story just went from there. I don't know how um, much of our conversation you were able to overhear, but we have been talking a little bit about chiropractic care and the image that people have of it. And and we had introduced you by saying you were a bit skeptical of going to begin with. Um, do you mm-hmm. find that when people see you having the results you've had, are they beginning to understand the the whole body approach that chiropractic can take? I believe they are. I really do. The, first of all, they're amazed that a chiropractor actually done the injection on my knee and the that it's working like it's supposed to. And you know, a lot of them are like a chiropractor. I'm like, yeah. It's, uh, he's not just a chiropractor, though. Um, he takes care of everything. He's a philosopher, um, too. Mm, that's what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you haven't had a philosophy conversation with him yet? Uh, yes, I have. I was going to say, you're missing one of life's great joys there, Ron. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, it's... it's I can't. I, I cannot recommend this enough to people that were that are in the pain that I was in. Best testimonial you can have. It, right? It's awesome. I, I do have to say one thing though. Um, I did not inject his knee. <laughs> we we have a mm. we you know people people are like he did what? <laughs> they uh, we, we have a, we have a medical team which we work together on that does this for me. They're, they're in my office with me. And, and yeah, because of regulations, yeah, you yeah, really can't. Yeah, I couldn't do it anyway. You know, R- Reed Minton did the uh, injections, and Dr. Soldo is our uh, clinic director, so he was there as well. So it's, it, we work as a team. I, I, th- I thought when I first got back into what we do is I can't do it all, but I can have people around me that can help me do it all. So, and we still don't do it all. We, we refer out. We're strictly musculoskeletal. But that's why working as a team, and that's why it works so, so well. How much does the team collaborate, though, too, Nick? I mean, having him there as a medical doctor, do you ever sometimes go in and, and kind of brainstorm a little Absolutely. bit? Absolutely. All the time. You know, I, I mean, I wish we would do it more. You know, uh, there are times, when, because he's not there all the time, but 
if we can if we can all be there at one time, we try to collaborate and say, hey, how can we make this better? How can we make this work in a better way? And we do talk about it. You know, um, I wish we could be together more to talk about it, but it just it's just not the, the schedules don't jive like that. Are there ever people who come in and would like to do the PRP, but for some reason they can't? Like, it, does your blood have to be healthy enough? Wow, that's anything? that's so funny. We had an instance where it was very hard to draw somebody's blood. There was for for some unknown reason, three people tried to draw the blood and we couldn't get it. Really? And we the and we, vein was just so yeah. Small? I mean, we tried several times. The blood would come out and stop. Blood would come out and stop. So there was maybe some platelet issues that we were dealing with, dehydration. You know, there's a lot of things that were – and it, rarely does something like that happen. But when it does, it's like, oh, how do we fix this if this is going to happen again? What about health issues? What if someone's not healthy enough to use – or uh, is that a – Well, you know, if you are if you are on anticoagulants, you know, blood thinners, we're not, um, not going to do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's certain things. There's certain pro- – uh, protocols that we do to say we're not going to do it on everybody but most of the time when we do it we make sure that the person's healthy to do it to them how much blood are you drawing just a vial just a tube one tube so it's not a lot no no we only we only did one on you ron right only one vial yeah only one yeah and then we 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 put about 10 cc's of serum we got a roughly between eight and ten out of that vial and we were able to do that because of the way the medium was set in there. Okay, so the fact then that Ron's out five months, he had this in, in early May, so now here we are, not even, well, not quite five months, but close. Uh, what's, the, what's, what's y'all's plan? Does Ron just call you if he begins to hurt again? And well, you hope to never have to see him again? Well, no, we see, we, I, I see him for uh, chiropractic care. And if we have a problem or if we have an issue, we're going to jump on it pretty quickly. We're not going to wait. Just like we were talking about possibly doing his other knee before it gets too bad that we're, you know, now we have to do other things. But I guess my point is that you don't have to have this monitored on a regular basis. Come back every month and let's check you out. It's just if you begin to have a a lessening quality of life, they call you and come back in. Yeah. I mean, some people want to do it, you know, in six, seven, eight months, in a year, 16 months. But, you know, it all depends on how they're doing and how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, I I don't want to set something up and say, you need to come back in six months. We're going to do this again. You know, if you're doing well, then, you know, if you're having a tinge of pain, let's see if we can get rid of all of it. If you're having no pain, why mess with perfection? What about, Ron, your, just the way you approach life? Because if you were in the kind of pain you were talking about, you must have been kind of pulling back from things you enjoy. I'm sure your mood was being affected. My mood was affected, and uh, I have three grandkids, and I couldn't get in the floor and play with them. Uh, one of them's uh, small enough where I, I love playing with him. Uh, since uh, since the injection, I get in the floor to play with the grandkids. If I have to get in the floor to, to fix something at my house, whatever, mm-hmm. I get in the floor, no problems, up and down, Um it's uh, it's been it's been nothing short of amazing. I'll have to say. I guess that people don't quite appreciate how problematic chronic pain can be until it happens to them. Is that true, Nick? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And Ron can attest to that. I mean, y- your whole attitude got gets changed with it. Oh yeah, it sure has. You know, it now, certainly has. Now you know when, and, and I know when I see Ron, it's it's you're happy. When you're feeling better, you're happy. I, I try to be happy all the time, but if I'm not feeling good, I'm not happy. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, this has been a happy hour. We've got to start wrapping it up because we've got to hit the next show. But, Ron, thank you for being good enough to call in and hang with us for all this time. We sure do appreciate it. You're more than welcome. I Enjoy appreciate it, Ron. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. You're more than welcome. And let me give Have you the phone day. number. We gave it to Rob. We'll give it to you, too. 855-7376 puts you right in touch to Dr. Circlone and the full team there at Apple Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation on Shalliford Road. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. This goes so quickly. I know. Ba, ba, ba.